Welcome to Pixel Composer 18.6. So this version coming with a bunch of new nodes, node improvement, user interface improvement, same as all the previous one. So let's get through it. First, we have the error diffusion dithering node. So this node allows you to apply a dithering using the error diffusion method. And it's gonna look very different from normal dithering. The result gonna be black and white or a binary in each channels. And you may notice that it's really slow. It's way slower than normal dithering. Right, but the result can be really interesting, it can be more random. Then we have the shuffle node, which will basically shuffle all the pixels in your image. Right, it will just create a noise image. You can set it to shuffle on only one axis. You can adjust the shuffling randomness. It will allow you to also create a fixed distribution noise. So in this case, I just put in the image, right, and we shuffle it. The output is just a random noise that use the same color and distribution as the original image. Then we have a Julia set generation node which will generate a Julia set or Julia pattern or Julia fractal. So there's a mathematical explanation for that. You can adjust different parameters to create different noise patterns. But generally, it's just a way to create a cool fractal. Then we have the part shape node. This is a node that allows you to create part object with a fixed shape. So you can create like a circle part or the polygon part or star part or all kind of like fixed shape part easily. We don't have to go through like drawing point by point. You can also adjust the parameter there as well. Then we have the repeat part node, which as the name suggests, allow you to repeat the part with different parameters to allow you to create some interesting patterns. And as usual, there are some general performance improvement on the node. And you also have improvement on the already existed node, like the number node and the vector node. Now got more gizmo setting, like an ability to adjust offset of the gizmo based on your preview panels, and the way to change the gizmo style. So instead of just the control anchor like this, you can set it to a different shapes. Or you can just use custom sprite for the gizmo as well. You can set it to show on global, which means that the gizmo will always appear when you are not selecting any node. And you can have multiple of them on global as well, which can be used as like a persistent controller. The vector 2, 3, and 4 also got an individual component output as well. So as you can see here, you can have it output each component individually instead of just as one array vector. Mesh warp also got an improvement on the custom mesh types. So first, there is now a support for a concave shape as well. So right now, it will deal with concave shape a little bit better. And there is now control for the randomness in the inner grid as well. So if you set it to zero, you're going to see that all the grid inside are aligned based on the global grid. You can also give it some randomization to redistribute the point. And now for the amateur system, there is improvement on the amateur create. So that now you can add constraint to the bone directly. So in the inspector panel here, you can check the add constraint option. And then click on it, you can select different constraints that you can do. You can have it copy the rotation, position, the scale of other bones. You can have it look at, move to, stretch to. Now be careful that some of them will depend on the status of the bone. If the bone is not detached to its parent, then it will not be able to move itself. Or the limit rotation can cause problems when you try to do it with kinematic, for example. And on the amateur post, you can hold all while posing the bone to lock its children transformation. So when you move the bone, you're gonna see that the children will keep its rotation. Now notice on the inspector, it basically just apply inward transformation to the children because technically, the bone is still a children. It should still be affected by its parent. So this will just apply the bone transformation. And this may cause some problem, like if you add animation to the bone, and then you use all key. But now when you play, you're gonna see that the children still follow its parents because you didn't animate the, the children bones, right? So if you want the children to also keep it position fixed, you have to add keyframe for both the bone and the children as well. Then the 3D camera now have a wireframe option which will allow it to render out the wireframes into the output. You will be able to adjust the wireframe thickness, the color, or the properties, and the ability to just render out the wireframes. Now, if you want to show the wireframe of all the mesh, don't forget to disable the backface culling as well. Now, one caveat is that this composer treat all mesh as a triangle. So it will triangulate all the meshes. In this case, the cube that look like a quad, right? Look like a square it will actually be triangle. You can also enable wireframe in the 3D preview setting as well with the thickness and color setting. The region field node got a random rotation setting 
the next you can apply random rotation to your shapes. The draw gradient node now get an individual axis control for the scaling so you can scale x and y axis independently. The stack node now get a blend mode setting so that when you use the on top mode you can change the blend mode between each surface. The draw line node also got a different edge cap setting so by default you can only select the round cap and the no cap but now you can also select triangular cap as well. The zoom blur now got the sample control so you can increase the resolution when you try to use the high strength zooming or when you try to use it on a larger higher resolution image. The pixel math node now support a comparison operation so greater than, less than, greater than equal and less than equal. The web part now got a new square shape so by default you have the zigzag and the sine wave or the smooth wave now you can have a square wave and there is now option for adding a post processing function like an absolute function to create this like cloud shape or a clamp function that will just cut out all the negative amplitude and the displacement node also got an improvement on the iterative algorithm so if you go to the algorithm section in the display node right we have this iterate option in the part it doesn't do much because it doesn't work it's actually a bug but now it should work properly so if you enable it and set the blend mode to like max now you should be able to make it do some interesting smear effect and then we have the improvement on user interface so first in the graph panel there's now auto organize option so you can select a bunch of nodes and then press ctrl l and it will try to auto organize or rearrange the entire graph based on the hierarchy you can change the horizontal padding and vertical padding to give it more space you can also disable snap to grid move it smoothly you can also access it on the toolbar as well here down there you're gonna see that there's now an auto organize and auto align option the dialog box also got an improvement in the past you can only resize the box from the, the right side or the bottom side now you can also resize the box from any direction including the left and the top revolutionary there's also an improvement on the autocomplete box to make it smoother to use and there's a number of bug fix as well I'm gonna show you on the screen as usual and that should be all for all the bullet point feature in this version now we also have a work on the game maker integration again here in the project panel you're gonna see that there is now a different tabs for each of the engine so for pixel composer it's just gonna be all the basic property that we already have and we have a new tab for game maker this is where you're gonna link your game maker project you're gonna see all the resource all the type set and there's now more works on the room editor so now you should be able to overwrite the tile set information that you have this big button overwrite tile data and now it should allow you to overwrite the tile data so you can draw oh this is the wrong layer <laughs> well i mean this is an overlay layer right you can draw on the layers and it will be saved in your rooms there's now an option for you to resize the room so in this gm room node you can go to the resize and now you can resize the room from any direction and that is something that you cannot even do in the original game maker which i found it to be quite dumbfounding like i understand they don't do that because every object origin point is based on the top left right so if you want to move object from the top or on the left then you have to move everything so do it then <laughs> they don't do that uh but i did that now now one problem is that with the tie set right because tie set it have like a fixed tie size so if you try to adjust your room size like arbitrarily like this before you enable it, you're gonna tell you that the room size is not divisible by tile size or it's not a multiple of tile size which may cause some tile shifting if your tile size is like 16 pixel wide and you want to add 8 pixel to the left then the tile size is just gonna shift by like the entire 16 pixel but all your object gonna shift by 8 it's gonna cause misalign so you can enable the tile option and now you can forward it to snap to tile and it should resize properly in this case it doesn't reside properly because this feature is not finalized yet right that, that's why i'm not putting this in the first part of the video because it's still an experimental it's still a work in progress don't use this in your actual production project obviously it's still in beta it will be buggy it will be crashy it will ruin your project so use it with caution but that will be it for today video oh one last thing uh merry christmas right <laughs> If everything went to plan, then this video and the beta version should release on Christmas Day, 25th of December, right? There's nothing special on this version. 
it just kind of finished around the Christmas day, so I just delayed a little bit. But yeah, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's too, since I'm probably not gonna release anything on New Year's. As usual, thank you everyone for watching, and special thanks for all of my Patreon supporters, and see you in the next one.